prescribe, prescribe to the but, but. Sanyasa. Sanyasa. Renunciation. Renunciation. Karmana. Karmana. Of activities. <coughs> Na. Na. Never. Never. Upapadite. Upapadite. Is deserved. Is deserved. Mohat. 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 By illusion. By illusion. Tasya. Of them. Of them. Pratyaga. Pratyaga. Renunciation. Tamasa in the mode of ignorance. Parakirti Taha is declared. Translation purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Prescribed duties should never be renounced. If one gives up his prescribed duties because of illusion, such renunciation is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Purport. Work for the material work for material satisfaction must be given up. But activities which promote one spiritual activity, like cooking for the Supreme Lord and offering food to the Lord, and then accepting the food are recommended. It is said that a person in the renounced order of life should not cook for himself. Cooking for himself is prohibited. But cooking for the Supreme Lord is not prohibited. Similarly, so sannyasi may perform a marriage ceremony to help his disciple in the advancement of Krishna consciousness. When renouncing such activities, it is to be understood that he is acting in the mode of darkness. The text again. Niyata siddhu sannyasa karmano no papadi de mohatasya parityagas tamasa parikirti daha. Prescribed beauty should never be renounced. One gives up his prescribed duties because of illusion. Such renunciation is said to be in the mode of ignorance. Om Vishnu Vraya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutta Shri Madhi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Dhanamane Namaste Sarasudhande Vay Gauravani Vrcharane Nirvishesha Shrinivadi Pasachadhyade Siddhartha And the nectar of, of devotion, which is known as the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Shuru Goswami gives us the Prati Basa Sloka, which is Anya Vilasita Shunyam Yana Karma Narabita Anukul Yena Krishnanu Shilanam Bhakti Uttama. So this means that pure devotional service is characterized by two different aspects. One is that, or you could say three, one is that it's for Krishna, and it's Anushilanam and Anukulanam. Anushilanam means that it's according to the, well, it's meant to please Krishna and his different manifestations. And Anukulanam is according to what's actually pleasing to them. So that's normal devotional service should be done for Krishna and according to what's pleasing to Krishna. And then Uttama Bhakti is Anyavilasita Shunyam there is no other desire except to please Krishna and Anyavilasita Jnana Karma Narita and all other activities except for pleasing to Krishna that which is pleasing to Krishna are all given up. So here in our process of performing sadhana bhakti, the same principle applies that we have to find out what we're supposed to do. Indeed, Krishna mentions in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which is the essence of all the Vedic scriptures. There are 10 billion slokas in the Vedas. Hard to memorize 10 billion slokas. <laughs> Therefore, it's summarized in 700 slokas, more convenient. So these 700 slokas must be quite important if they summarize the entire Vedic literature. And out of these 700 slokas, two are repeated twice, one half time. And the 
one that's famous, it's repeated twice, is Manmana Bhava Madhato, Madhyaji Mam Namaskuru, Mamai Vaishasi, Satyam Te Pratijani Priyosime. It's repeated in a different way. Manmana Bhava Madhato, Madhyaji Mam Namaskuru, Mamai Vaishasi, Satyam Te Pratijani Priyosime. So one is Yuktaiva and the other is Satyam. Which means always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, offer your homage unto me. The result is you'll come to me without fail. I promise you this because you're very much my very dear friend. But then there's another verse which is also repeated twice, which may not seem as important. Why is this verse repeated twice? Shreyansa Swavanu Vikuna Paradharma Sunustita. Shre Dharma Nidanam Shayat Paradharma Bhayavaha. Shreyanswadhu Viguna. It is important that one perform his own duty. Shreyanswadhu Viguna Paradharma Sunustita. Shreyanswadhu Viguna Dinam Shreya Paradharma Bhayavaha. Rather than performing somebody else's duty, destruction in the course of one's own duty, even though performed imperfectly, is better because to follow someone else's duty is dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because everyone is, has a duty to perform in the spiritual world. Of course, the duty is simply engaged in some kind of rasa with Krishna. And here there is duties according to the Varna and Ashram system. So we don't do our own duty, what we're supposed to do. That's sinful. And if we take up someone else's duty, that's also sinful. First of all, they'll be out of a job, and we'll be doing some job we're not supposed to be doing. And it's a violation of the principle, we're supposed to do what Krishna wants us to do. Krishna, this is Krishna's body, and if it's going to be engaged in his service, or if it's going to be engaged in harmony with him, we must be doing what he wants us to do with it do something else means we're out of sync with Krishna's desire, both materially and spiritually. Therefore, believe it or not, everyone has a duty to perform, because most people think their duty in this age is just to eat, sleep, make, and defend, like the animals. They make it a little more sophisticated. They think their duty is to go and work like a dog eat like a hog, sleep like a bear, and have sex like a pigeon. And somehow or another get money to accomplish all these things. Beg, borrow, or steal. But actually the purpose of Vedic culture is Jagavai Vishnu. Therefore it says Jagnata Kamano Nyatra Loka yam kamar bandhanai, tarartam apikunti yam mukta sangasamashra. Work done is a set for the satisfaction of Vishnu has to be performed, otherwise work binds one to this material world, perform prescribed duties for his satisfaction, O son of Kunti, and this way I'll remain ever unattached and free from bondage. So the difficulty of not performing prescribed duties is that one will become entangled. And what is that entanglement? Is that one's consciousness will be covered, so one will be unaware of one's spiritual identity and the existence of the Supreme Law. And one will be impelled by the material nature to act in ways which will further entangle one. Therefore, Krishna, after saying, one should do his duty, Arjuna says, well, what happens if I don't do my duty? So then Krishna says, Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, Rajaguna Samudbhava, Mahashana Mahapapma, Vidina Ihavarina. That is, lust only Arjuna, which is born of contact with the material mode of passion, and later transformed into wrath, which is the all devouring sinful enemy of this world. So one will be overtaken by lust, anger, greed, which will lead to illusion, forget, uh, forgetfulness and loss of intelligence. 
But people seem in this age apparently perfectly happy to undergo the sufferings. Matter of fact, they think lust, serving lust is actually wonderful. And if they can become greedy, that's called inspiration. Instead of being inspired to love Krishna, they're inspired to be greedy. That's what makes modern civilization go on, is a lot of greedy people. And generally greed means I, you give to me and I take from you. How to cheat people so that they're actually thinking they're getting a good deal and they're just being robbed blind. They become convinced that they need all these what's called an arthas, like the cosmetic industry. You walk in, I don't know, here in I'm sure in Ljubljana, in every place practically, where they have huge stores. They have stores bigger than this building, and the store that has sections bigger than this building, just filled with cosmetics. To make a mouse look like a beauty queen. You can paint yourself in such a way is that not even your own mother would recognize you. <laughs> and people are spending unlimited amount of money to decorate their body, to make it appear that it's something that it's not. And people think that this is life. It is said that in America that a lady will not go out of the house until she uses at least 28 beauty products on her body, and a man 18. <laughs> so, at a great cost of money and endeavor, people are engaging in trying to fulfill their lust. And if they can become greedy, so much the better. If you're greedy, then you can collect thousands and millions of times more than you need. That way you feel more secure. Now I have two billion dollars in the bank, I'm sure I'm going to get something to eat tomorrow. Or maybe if I had four, I'd be twice as, four billion, I'd be twice as secure. Or as far as they look at their bank balance every day, lick up their bank balance every day. Think about how sweet it tastes. So that's called greed. And if I lose even a dollar out of the four billion, I become angry, frustrated. Why did I lose the dollar? I feel depressed. Now I only have three billion, nine hundred ninety-nine billion, ninety-nine million, nine hundred ninety-nine thousand. <laughs> And there's a whole illusion that with my billions of dollars that even the Amadudas come and I can bribe them. <laughs> How much do you need for your return ticket? I'll give you a little extra. <laughs> so they're completely in delusion living in a never never land that I'm actually the enjoyer and the controller of this universe. The sun is rising to shine on my, my empire. The moon is rising to claim the glories of my empire. They're just completely in illusions. They don't know that they're not their body, that these things are simply arranged by the illusory energy due to their past good or bad deeds. And that sooner they'll all be lost, and they'll be thrown into another species of life. And they have no memory of even the basic things, reality. They just, the illusion increases. And they become more and more absorbed in their dreamland. And finally they lose all intelligence. So everything they're doing is simply aiming them to the lower species of life. But actually, people are supposed to find out what the job is. And that job is ultimately to sacrifice for Vishnu. The shooters assist the Vaishas who grow in the food so that everyone can be healthy and 
and strong, and the ingredients for sacrifice, especially the cows, ghee, and other paraphernalia, would be utilized by the Brahmins and arranged by the Kshatriyas so that sacrifice for Vishnu could be performed so that when Krishna was satisfied by the attempts to satisfy him with the ingredients of this material world, then everyone would be happy because Krishna would be happy. And without performance of Jaga, then without the performance of sacrifice, then Eva Pravartitam Chakram Nanu Vartiti Haya Adayur and Riyara Mo Mo Kamparta Sijiviti. A person who is not engaged in performing sacrifice certainly lives a life of sin. For a person living a life of sin, he certainly lives in vain. Of course, Krishna says, Mogaisha Moga Karmano, Moga Gyanvi Chaitasaha. Without knowing Krishna is God, without sacrificing for Krishna's satisfaction, then people's hopes for liberation, their fruit of activities, and their culture of knowledge are all defeated. So they want, may want to be happy by accumulating things. They may want knowledge of how the material world works. They want to meditate towards liberation. But without serving Krishna, without satisfying Krishna, Everything will just go in vain. They'll be defeated by the illusory energy. And everything they think is progress is just another step of illusion. Therefore, there are prescribed duties in this age because people generally have no idea what the prescribed duty is. So, there are two types of sadharmas. One is the spiritual sadharma given by the spiritual master and disciple succession. And the other is the Sudharma prescribed by the Varna and Ashram system. So, since in this age no one has any conception, practically speaking, of what their actual Varna and even Ashram is not so clear sometimes, therefore it's recommended that we serve the orders of Krishna in the disciple succession, namely performing a sadhana bhakti, especially the chanting Hare Krishna, will substitute for other kinds of Sudharma. The, the Swadharma of the, uh, the Varnashram system. Therefore, living a regulated household life, where in the morning and evening, chanting Hare Krishna with the family, hearing Shrimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, is not simply one of the many re alternatives we have. We can watch television, we can go to the movie, or we can sit down with the deities and chant Hare Krishna. Which would you like to do today? Oh, you haven't seen this movie. It's spiritual. It's called Avatar. It must be spiritual. <laughs> Let's go and see. Bring the kids. We bring the deities too. <laughs> Christian can see his avatar. <laughs> no, it's these different parts of Sadhana Bhakti, they're not simply one of the many alternatives that we have. They are our duty in this age. And if we don't do it, we can say, well, we're going to get into trouble. But we're already in trouble. We'll just get into more trouble. Prabhupada was mentioning about devotees going, meditating, Radha Khan. He said, well, they, they shouldn't do that. There's already enough monkeys in Radha Khan. They don't need any more. <laughs> So similarly, there's enough problems going on, unless we perform the Sadhana Bhakti that Rupa Goswami has given us in the nectar of devotion, then we'll simply be causing trouble for ourselves and others. And there's Vayava, Vayava. And what is the danger? We may feel secure that now we have the uniform of life, now we're engaged in devotional service, now I'm going to go at least to the heavenly planets after I leave this body. So everything's all right. It doesn't really matter what I do. But it's dangerous. As soon as we deviate even the slightest degree from our son of bhakti, there's a possibility of getting entangled again in the material world. And at some time having to face the possibility of taking another form of life. So one should be careful not to avoid performing one's duties in devotional service at least, and we have the basic minimum of varna, 
and especially ashram, very basic. There are brahmachari and there are rules and regulations. Nowadays we have so many new ideas. Krishna West, Krishna East, Krishna North, Krishna South. <laughs> so there's so many ideas how to perform devotional service, but as soon as we stop giving up the principles that our Acharya has given us, in the start concocting our own methods of doing things, then the result is that generally the men and women mix more and more together. You know, this is old-fashioned. Swamiji at the beginning was very, you know, allowed them to, to mix, and now we're trying to get very strict. No, it's you put butter and fire together, you're going to get, the butter's going to melt. It's not, that's old-fashioned. Now, of course, nowadays they have new kinds of butter, which nothing can melt. <laughs> but real butter actually melts when it gets in contact with fire. So similarly, in the scriptures in the Vedic culture for ashram were scriptures. In the Vedic culture, you didn't have brahmastras, combinations of brahmacharya and grihastas. Babacharyas are called. You actually had real brahmacharyas, and women would be trained up, and they lived in an ashram, apart from worldly association, and they strictly controlled their mind and senses. And they went through austerity, they developed a service attitude. Even Krishna was in Balaram, they lived in an ashram. And at night, Krishna and Balaram didn't go and dance with the gopis. So boring being this ashram. <laughs> Prashadam is not quite what it, like, it was like when I was living with Mother Jasoda. The gopis aren't cooking for me anymore. I'm sleeping on the floor. I miss my bed. Let me sneak out and dance with the go back to and dance with the gopis. But Krishna and Balaram lived Sadi Pani Mani Muni's ashram, and they lived strictly as, as brahmacharis, even going out into the forest and collecting wood for Sadi Pani Muni. So if we think, well, that poor Krishna, you know, he couldn't afford an iPad or an iPhone, <laughs> kind of primitive back there, what could he do? Couldn't get a scholarship, so he had a good free education. Sandy Pani Muni's ashram. So we should be mistaken that this is the standard, and therefore, when Krishna was trained up properly, he could actually become a household, a proper household, and marry a few queens. But first, he was trained in an ashram. So similarly nowadays, there are distinct ashrams, there is the ashram of Brahmachari, and the scriptures give injunctions, and we can't make up our own injunctions. Brahmachari Guru Kule Vasandanta Guru Arhitam Achavan Vasavanisho Surida Soas Suras Goro Surida Sorida Sodrida Sorida Sodrida Sorida that there is Brahmachari Guru Kule Vasandanta Gurori. There's sense of mind control in the, in the Brahmachari Ashram. So that if one does become a Grihasta, one becomes an actual Grihasta rather than a Grihamati. So that the wife, one lives peacefully with the wife and children and they live together to advance in spiritual life. And then one becomes prepared to take Vana Prasa Ashram and go through some austerities, or at least to renounce any further family life and to dedicate, focus one's mind in Krishna consciousness and pure devotional service. And then at the end, one can completely absorb oneself in Krishna consciousness and pure devotional service. So that's recommended here on things done as a sacrifice for Krishna. They're not considered material, and therefore even one should not renounce things that could be utilized in Krishna's service.
was that Prapasika, Prapasika, Hari Sambandhi Vastana Paritya Sarvastu Utrite. That was the first one. Uh, Anasakta Sivikshayan Yitarham Upayunjitaha Nirvanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagi Utrite. That everything here is actually meant for Krishna's service, and if it's utilized for Krishna's service, then we'll remember Krishna. And that's called Krishna goddess. And if it's not utilized for Krishna service, this is used for sense enjoyment. We won't remember Krishna. We'll simply get entangled in material consciousness. So therefore, Prabhupada is stressing that prescribed duties could be utilized. For instance, cooking, Prabhupada says, cooking for oneself, if one is in the renounce order of life, and cooking for oneself is prohibited. But the same cooking can be done for Krishna, and if it helps one remember Krishna, that's the perfection of renunciation. Similarly, Prabhupada points out marriage ceremonies, because at that time, Prabhupada was the only one who knew how to light a fire, or the fire sacrifice. And therefore he performed the fire sacrifice for his Prihasa disciples. So generally, sannyasis didn't get involved in such activities. There was no question of sannyasis. That was meant for the Grihasa Brahmanas to perform such sacrifices. But because Prabhupada was in a situation, he had no, there was no one else to do it. He did it. For Krishna's service, he created Grihasas. And therefore he performed the sacrifice for it. So if he gave it up and said, well, I can't get involved in such a thing, I'm a sannyasi, then his service to Krishna which is to engage his disciples in Krishna's service, would have been lacking to some degree. Therefore he did what was necessary in Krishna's service. So that's considered the perfection of renunciation. Rather than just renouncing the material world, utilize the material world in Krishna's service and do whatever is necessary. Therefore utility is the principle. But the aim should be Krishna's happiness, Krishna's pleasure, to advance the cause of Krishna consciousness, not to simply get entangled in doing something novel and unique or think I'm free to do whatever I want because no one's looking or something. In any case, the intelligence perform to understand what's to be done and what's not to be done requires some direct inspiration from Krishna. If a problem was able to do things that no one else had done before. First of all, no one else had gone around the world and established Krishna consciousness under the circumstances the problem was able to do it, and therefore he had to do what was necessary to maintain and cultivate the creation of Krishna consciousness that he himself established around the world. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Sometimes uh, we encourage brahmacharis to stay brahmacharis by pointing out the drawbacks and suffering and the um, and difficulties in the Grihastasana. Although I think this is the next verse. Yeah. So, uh, and the next verse says that uh, when one renounces because of the difficulties or discomfort or displeasure, then such renunciation is in. Mode of passion. Mode of passion, yes. Yeah. So, is that preaching uh, <clears throat> addressing the mode of passion? Or no, the prescribed duties. Your brahmachari. <laughs> you have your prescribed duties already. If you're a grihasta, you start claiming, I'm not going to go and work. I'm not going to, you know, chant Hare Krishna with my family. I'm not going to cook because it's too troublesome. That's renunciation, mode of passion. 